rebuilding the gearbox as we've had a look inside both of the middle cases of this Grom engine and we haven't found any debris that leads to or at least leads me to think that any of what's happened to the piston has ended up in the bottom end which is perfect so I haven't got to worry about any large pieces of debris damaging anything so that's out of the way the next thing I am doing was Yuman actually sent me a racing fourth gear which has a slightly different ratio to it to give you more of an aggressive fourth gear. So when you actually change to fourth, you have the power to stay in fourth. So I've taken out the counter shaft, which you can see here, and done a couple of things to this. So this has had a slightly different setup put on it. If I just remove the counter shaft. Right, so it is this middle sprocket here, which has the different gearing, so this one. Uh, if you haven't seen a gearbox before and are familiar, obviously, with the phrase shifting gears, that literally means that fork that slides in here, as you shift, changes so things can move either separately or together as one, changes to put different gears in contact with each other across two shafts, at least in the Grom across two shafts. This is a four-speed box, so... If it were a five speed, you'd have an extra um, shifting fork and you would have slightly more uh, cogs and gears on this. Above that is the barrel. So the forks line up with grooves in this and as you tow the shifter, it turns and it clicks to different positions. And that is what slides the forks along grooves. These little, bo these little um bits of the fork end up in the grooves on the barrel on there there yeah and then that forces this to slide up and down to change the gears these all slide on a guide pin the guide pin keeps everything um, together and lined up properly the other gear that I'm changing is this one here so this is one that the fork directly attaches to but as it's brand new and it hasn't actually been used in an engine before. It is um, rather stiff to move around, which is a pain in the backside. This is the gear it's uh, replacing. You can see the dogs on there. These are the things that link together. So uh, the one on the left is the Yumanashi one. And I think it actually says Yumanashi on it. There you go. And the one on the right is the stock one. So this is quite difficult to slide up and down the shaft a lot of pressure to get the thing to move if so i just pop that off there we go i'll put that one down i'll show you a comparison by putting the stock one back on this slides on moves up and down freely which gives you a much smoother gear change so i think what has to happen with um changing the gears around is i'm probably gonna have to oil that new one a bit better and i think with use this has got a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of play in it, if you can see that, which is normal given the use of, uh, of changing gears and obviously at the speed this is all moving, you've got to think how, how quickly these things are turning and mashing into each other. But all of the tiny, tiny little flakes you saw in the last video on the bottom of the engine are from all of the mating surfaces between the metals hitting each other at speed and slowly grinding off small flakes that end up in the oil. And that also ends up through the filter system. So the stuff that's at the bottom of the engine isn't everything that's come off the um, spinning and rotating parts that are going around the engine. That's just what hasn't been caught by the filtration system. So that's my task for the moment, is to sort out the gears. I would recommend if you are working on an engine, obviously most of it's aluminium on the outside and um, with steel fasteners. So. You have to be careful not to damage aluminium. Best thing, I made this work surface out of uh, a few pallets. I pulled the faces off the pallets and filled in every other board so I had a wooden surface I can work on. I do a lot of cutting, grinding and painting on this, as you can see by the spray paint left over from when I made my skid plate. This is perfect to put the engine on because I can lay things out. Uh, when you do lay things out, lay them out in the order you took them out and make sure that you take plenty of reference photos. The other thing that I do is I make a quick sketch 
of what things look like. And then when I take the bolts out, I put all the bolts in the order they came out in. In this particular case, it doesn't matter so much as all of these bolts are the same size. The only ones that really matter are these three, as they belong on the inside of one of the covers. And if you put one of these dirty ones on the inside, then whatever's on that is eventually going to be washed around the engine. So I wouldn't recommend that. If you can't get yourself the gaskets that you need uh, to put the main cases together on this, it requires a uh, Honda Bond sealant. So I'll be using the sealant. Uh, my only other recommendation, if you can't get gaskets, is to buy a gasket sheet. So this is quite a thick one, mind you, but the concept is the same. You buy a sheet of gasket material, you take whatever part you need, put a bit of oil around the edge and stamp it onto this, and that'll give you a perfect cutout of the shape you need. However, you need to be careful not to put sealant or um, the gasket covering certain parts of the engine. If I bring over this other engine case, for example, this really small groove in here is an oil port or an oil gallery. So you have to be really careful that you don't block that up with sealant or anything as that will stop the oil flow going around the engine. So things like that you have to look at the manual for. The manual I'd recommend is grab yourself a Haynes manual. So the manual I'm currently using. I grab that. So I've got the Haynes manual for the Grom. And the page that I'm looking on is to do with, well, mainly getting off the thrust washer, as that is a real pain in the backside. But it's all labelled out, pictured, annotated for you to make things easier. So if you are going ahead to disassemble any one of your bikes or engines, I would recommend getting yourself a manual and looking up what you can using the references there. But that's my job for the day. I'm nearly, nearly done. I just need to make sure that I get this new Yumanashi setup in there aligned up and get things ready to be sealed back together. I don't have the Honda Bond, Honda Bond sealant for today. I'm gonna get things in a position where I can put them to one side and not worry about them. And obviously I can't leave everything out in the driveway. But any questions, um, let me know, message me, subscribe to my YouTube. Um, capital P for Pro9 and to my TikTok which is lowercase at Pro9 underscore adventures and it would really help me out if you had a look at my link tree and went to the GoFundMe have a look at my story written down on there and if you can spare anything I'd really appreciate it as it helps me carry on doing content like this and to get the bike ready with all the repairs and take it to some fun places so that's all from me I hope this helps somebody because um it's these sort of videos that I wish I had. So um, yeah, let me know and I will see you in the next one.